Hello Vital Sign. Today we're going to talk about the lexicographic product of graphs, also known as the composition of graphs. The lexicographic product of graphs is a graph operation that takes as its input two undirected simple graphs, G and H, and outputs a new undirected simple graph with vertex set equal to the Cartesian product of the vertex sets of G and H. That is, every vertex in the lexicographic product of graphs corresponds to an ordered pair of vertices from G and H, where the left entries in the pairs are vertices from graph G, and the right entries are vertices from graph H. There are two conditions for adjacency in a lexicographic product of graphs. The first is this. Two vertices in the lexicographic product of graphs G and H, where G is the left graph and H is the right graph, are connected if their left entries are adjacent in graph G. That squiggly line in our adjacency condition means adjacent to. The second condition is this. Two vertices in the lexicographic product of G and H are connected if their left entries are the same vertex in graph G and their right entries are adjacent in graph H. That's all there is to the adjacency rules for a lexicographic product. Let's work through three examples together. What is the lexicographic product of these two graphs? Well, first find the vertex set, which is the Cartesian product of the vertex sets of G and H. Next, since this is our first example, let's determine the adjacencies one vertex at a time. According to the first adjacency condition, two vertices in the lexicographic product are connected if their left entries are adjacent in the left graph graph G. For vertex A1, since vertex A is adjacent to vertex B in graph G, then vertex A1 will connect to all vertices whose letter or left entry is B. According to the second adjacency condition, two vertices in the lexicographic product are connected if their left entries are the same vertex in the left graph G, and their right entries or numbers are adjacent vertices in the right graph H. For vertex A1, since vertex 1 is adjacent to vertex 2 in graph H, vertex A1 connects to the vertex whose number or right entry is 2 and whose letter is still A. Now for vertex A2. As before, by the first adjacency condition, A2 will connect to all vertices whose left entry is a vertex adjacent to A in graph G. That is, it will connect to all vertices whose left entry is B. And by the second adjacency condition, it will also connect to all vertices whose right entry is a vertex adjacent to vertex 2 in graph H, and whose left entry is still A. Now for vertex A3. By the first adjacency condition, A3 will connect to all vertices whose left entry is adjacent to vertex A in graph G, meaning all vertices whose left entry is B. And by the second adjacency condition, a3 will connect to all vertices whose right entry is adjacent to vertex 3 in graph H and whose left entry is still A, meaning that it will connect to A2. On to vertex B1. By the first adjacency condition, B1 connects to all vertices whose left entry is adjacent to vertex B in graph G, meaning all vertices whose left entry is A or C. And by the second adjacency condition, B1 connects to all vertices whose left entry is still B and whose right entry is adjacent to vertex 1 in graph H. On to vertex B2. By the first adjacency condition, B2 connects to all vertices whose left entry is A or C. And by the second adjacency condition, B2 connects to all vertices with left entry B and right entry either 1 or 3. Just four more to go. Vertex B3. By the first adjacency condition, B3 connects to all vertices whose left entry is A or C, as A and C are adjacent to B in graph G. And by the second adjacency condition, B3 connects to all vertices with left entry B and right entry adjacent to vertex 3 in graph H. Three more to go. Vertex C1. By the first adjacency condition, C1 connects to all vertices whose left entry is adjacent to vertex C in graph G, 
meaning all vertices whose left entry is B. And by the second adjacency condition, C1 connects to all vertices with left entry C and right entry 2, as vertex 2 is adjacent to vertex 1 in graph H. Vertex C2. By the first adjacency condition, C2 connects to all vertices with left entry adjacent to vertex C in graph G, meaning those with left entry B. And by the second adjacency condition, C2 connects to all vertices whose right entry is adjacent to vertex 2 in graph H. Last one, vertex C3. By the first adjacency condition, C3 connects to all vertices whose left entry is adjacent to vertex C in graph G, meaning those with left entry B. And by the second adjacency condition, C3 connects to all vertices with left entry C and right entry adjacent to vertex 3 in graph H. Alright, before we move on to the next example, let's cover the intuition behind a lexicographic product, as that will let us calculate these products much quicker. A more intuitive way to look at the lexicographic product is this. Copy your right graph for each vertex in the left graph. Then, for copies whose left entries are adjacent vertices in graph G, the left graph, connect each vertex in one copy to every vertex in the other copy. Basically, this intuition arises from the adjacency conditions of the lexicographic product. The second adjacency condition tells us how to connect vertices within each copy of the right graph, H. And the first adjacency condition tells us how to connect vertices in different copies to each other, according to the adjacencies in the left graph, G. The intracopy edges arise from the second adjacency condition. The intercopy edges arise from the first adjacency condition. And of course, the graph we refer to as being copied is graph H, the right graph. Now that we have this intuition under our belts, let's tackle two more examples. What is the lexicographic product of these two graphs? First, copy the right graph for each vertex in the left graph. As we talked about before, this gives us the adjacencies resulting from our second adjacency condition. Now, there are only two vertices in the left graph, and they are adjacent. So by the first adjacency condition, that means every vertex in our first copy will connect to every vertex in our second copy. This is our result. In red, I've highlighted the edges that result from the first adjacency condition, and in green, the edges that result from the second adjacency condition. Notice the total number of edges in this product is 26. As our last example, what is the lexicographic product of these two graphs? Now wait a second, aren't these the same graphs we just did? Yes, but the graphs appear in a different order, and as you'll see in a second, the lexicographic product of graphs is not necessarily commutative. First, copy the right graph for each vertex in the left graph. Now things get a bit more complicated than before. We'll be using the first adjacency condition from here on out. Connect all vertices with A's for a left entry to all vertices with B's for a left entry as A is adjacent to B in H. Then, connect all vertices with A's for a left entry to all vertices with D's for a left entry. Next, connect all vertices with B's for a left entry to all vertices with D's for a left entry. Then, connect all vertices with C's for a left entry to all vertices with B's for a left entry. And finally, connect all vertices with C's for a left entry to all vertices with D's for a left entry. Now look at the running total of edges in this product. We have 24 edges in this product, but if we look back to our previous example, there were 26 edges, proving that this is indeed a different or non-isomorphic graph. The main takeaway from this example should be that the lexicographic product, unlike the Cartesian product, is not necessarily commutative. The reason for this is because the adjacency conditions are not of the same form for the left or right graph in the product. One deals only with the adjacency symbol, while the other deals with both equality and adjacency symbols. So it makes sense that switching the order of the graphs would matter. That's it for this video. In my next video, we'll take a deeper look at the lexicographic product 
examining three major properties. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, share, and comment if you liked the video. Have a great day.